Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. We're today in a domination battle here on the Crash Zone Alpha map. We have, um, I'm going to call him Ned. Hopefully you've already figured out why. Ned is in the Tier 8 premium French battleship, the Flandre. And rather than continuing to mangle the French pronunciation, I'm simply going to recall this ship by the name that it was, well, not the ship itself, but the town around which several battles were fought during the First World War, after which this ship is named, and which the British troops present in those battles simply called Flanders. So, I mean, there's nothing too difficult about uh, SRT Demon's name here, but Ned's just easier, and also it's Ned in the Flanders. Please tell me I don't have to explain that one. Seriously, what do they teach you kids in school these days? So, while things are warming up, and since I'm, I don't actually think I've featured this ship before, I should probably explain a bit about it. Tier 8 French Battleship. There are a number of good points, there are a number of bad points. Let's start with a good. It's got a huge health pool, 75,000. I think it may even have the biggest health pool of any Tier 8 battleship in the game. I'll impose a little break here for all of you internet fact checkers to go off and spend 15 minutes checking whether or not that's the case so you can come back with an actually jingled. Actually, no I won't. You all know how to pause a video. So, moving on. What else is good about this ship? Unusually for a French battleship, the secondaries aren't completely terrible. It's got a lot of them, and the 100mm secondaries, 24 of them, while the calibre isn't high enough to do actual damage to anything other than cruiser and battleship superstructure and the hulls of destroyers, they do set a lot of fires. And it also has a fair number of 152mm secondaries that can actually do damage to cruisers and certain battleships, and also have a good chance of setting a fire on target. They have very good base range and accuracy though. While I would normally not... Ooh, hello, there we go, secondaries in action. Yeah, check out the range on these things. I mean, I normally wouldn't recommend a secondary build to anybody sailing French battleships, but in this ship, it's not a completely terrible idea. It's still never going to be as good as a secondary build on something like a Massachusetts, or uh, anything German, or anything Japanese on with 100mm secondaries. Um, in certain... I'm not recommending all you Japanese battleship players go out <laughs> and respect secondary builds okay. But there are certain Japanese battleships, like the Key, for example, where a secondary build can actually be pretty good because of the quarter caliber penetration buff that the Japanese 100mm guns get in order to make ships like the Akazuki and the Kitakaze and the Harugamo playable. Uh, you don't get any of that with uh, French battleships. But 24 100mm guns are going to set a lot of fires. And they come with very good base range and accuracy anyway, so it's not a completely terrible idea to capitalise on that. What else is good? Well, the armour-piercing shells have high velocity and good penetration, and there's good fire chance in the high explosive shells, and the main battery turrets have a pretty quick traverse. Obviously, she's also pretty fast. She is French. And that's really about it. Oh, this is looking dangerous. That's a lot of very angry looking smoke screens. The ship does actually also have fairly good torpedo damage reduction, but it's always better to not get hit by the torpedoes in the first place. This is looking like a kill, Mr. Shimanto. Here's them citadels you ordered. Yep, there they go. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we've covered what's good, what's bad. Uh, well, the calibre of the guns does leave something to be desired. They are only 15 inch. But I mean, the Bismarck has 15 inch guns and the Bismarck does all right, so it's not that bad. The damage throughput from the high explosive shells, however, despite having a high chance of fire on target, is not great. This isn't an HE spammer, it's not British. Oh, oh, are we going to get another kill here? Uh, you know, the only reason that Gator was going to expose himself at that kind of range was to launch torpedoes, right? And those weren't them. Oh, oh, this could be bad. This could be very bad. Yeah, there they are. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, this is not good. Although I think... 
He was very lucky to get away with only taking two of those. Hopefully, lesson learned. There was a Baltimore sticking out around the corner of the island over there on the left, wasn't there? I mean, there's a North Carolina up there shooting at him, and wow, did you see that? Those, those were three shots from the same turret landing like 150 metres apart. Oh yeah, there's the Baltimore. And we were talking about what was bad, and it's to do with the calibre of these guns, because they are only 380mm, it means you can't overmatch the bounds of high-tier cruisers. And so you're never going to sit at El Baltimore from the front. Which means you kind of have to use the secondaries and the high-explosive shells. And while the high-explosive shells do have a high chance of setting a fire on target, the actual damage throughput is pretty miserable. But there's an extremely suspicious-looking smoke screen up front, and a battleship, the North Carolina, which is on with 16-inch guns up ahead of him. Although the North Carolina can't overmatch his bows and citadel him from the front either. So he doesn't really have much choice other than to... Yep. Good. Good. Good to see. Slows. Yep. Nice torpedo beats. He's able to keep the bows pointing towards the torpedo threat so he can thread the needle between the torpedo tracks like that. Uh, take any 16 inch armor piercing from the North Carolina on the chin and just continue chipping away at the Baltimore. There we go, double fire. And he can do this without too much fear of taking any citadels from the Baltimore. Baltimore is not the real threat here. It's the destroyer and the battleship up ahead of him. What is the Baltimore doing? Because he's getting shot at by the Harlem now as well. There's a nice big island there. You can take cover behind Mr. Baltimore. That involves going the opposite way to the way that you... Is the Baltimore trying to get close enough to launch torpedoes? Is that it? Yeah, I know the Baltimore doesn't have torpedoes. You know the Baltimore doesn't have torpedoes. I'm just not entirely sure that the Baltimore didn't know that the Baltimore doesn't have torpedoes. What the hell was the point of that? The Baltimore literally had two choices there. Back up into cover and live, or don't. <laughs> he chose violence. It was the wrong choice. Okay, good news. The North Carolina is in secondary range, so we're going to get some fire started. No, nope, no, nope, screw that. The Akatsuki just popped up. Secondary is focused on the Akatsuki, and he's definitely the biggest threat because you can angle against the North Carolina. You can't really angle against torpedoes. Some good hits on the Akatsuki. Not good enough, though. And the Akatsuki is wisely not shooting, which means he's about to go undetected. Yep, there's his smoke. Now, this is a problem. Because while Ned is capping, you absolutely definitely do not want to slow to a stop inside a cap circle with a smoked up destroyer that close to you. So he has to keep going. Hopefully the Harlem behind him is going to be able to finish flipping that cap circle. There is another problem here though, or there very soon will be. And well, the North Carolina given a nice big flat broadside to these 15 inch armor piercing uh, shells and eating a bunch of citadels was not it. The, the problem is the Fuso over there on the other side of this island. The island that's right in front of him, which means he has to start turning because he doesn't want to beach himself in front of that smoke screen, and he doesn't want to slow down and stop in front of that smoke screen, and he does have to remain angled against the North Carolina's guns. But if he keeps going around the island, he's going to be given a broadside to the Fuso, so instead he just continues the turn. At the moment, and that's why he continued the turn, the torpedoes from that very suspicious smoke screen. At the moment, he's kind of vulnerable to the North Carolina but only the North Carolina's rear turret. So it's only three guns. It is an acceptable risk. But at this angle, he's very vulnerable to the Fuso. So he weighs up the odds and decides that since the Akatsuki did just launch at least one set of torpedoes, it might be better to angle it. Yeah, oh, hang on a second. Oh, that's really good news. There's the other two torpedo launches from the Akatsuki. So the Akatsuki is no longer inside the smoke screen. He's up there with the North Carolina. This is great. Now we can angle against both of the battleships while still presenting as narrow a target profile as possible to any torpedo reloads from the Akatsuki. North Carolina did manage to take one of his turrets out, but it's on such low health he doesn't need to blow the damage control that he might need if he gets set on fire or torpedoed. There goes the North Carolina. Fantastic. Oh, and there's the Akatsuki. Secondary is focused on him. Angle against the Fuso. Here comes the Fuso's 14-inch armor piercing. It'll do some damage, but it's not going to be catastrophic. Focus on the Akatsuki. He's the biggest threat. His torpedoes are going to be reloading, if not now, then very, very soon. At least one launcher. Look at the secondaries go. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Akatsuki is once again capable of thinking and breathing at the same time. He's not shooting back. He's gone undetected. 
and without the benefit of any radar or hydro, Ned is just going to have to rely on guesstimation to keep him safe from any torpedoes coming from that direction. He continues to angle against the Fuso. The Fuso probably would have done better firing high explosive, but he's launching what he's got. The secondaries are pummeling him. Fires are being set. He's actually doing some damage to the Fuso superstructure. Most of that's probably coming from the 152mm secondaries rather than the 100mm secondaries. And you'll note that he keeps turning away from the Akatsuki, who has just popped up again. There go the secondaries. Finish this guy off. More fires set on the Fuso. Shots out against the Akatsuki. I think this may be a kill. It is a kill. There's the Kraken unleashed. The Fuso is the last surviving ship on the enemy team. Continuing to hammer him with the secondaries, waiting for the reload. There's more fires. But the Akatsuki definitely had time to reload his torpedoes. Although he was pretty far away, here they come. Shots out. And, yep, the torpedoes didn't have the range. <laughs> Which, of course, is exactly why Ned sailed this course away from the Akatsuki in the first place. And there's kill number six on the Fuso. Game over. Bit of a rout, really. I think um, Ned's team only suffered four casualties and wiped the floor with the enemy team in slightly longer than 10 minutes. Uh, I hope that's not something of a trend and it's just the statistical outlier rather than the way World of Warships is going because you get that a lot in World of Tanks these days. It's rare to see a battle last longer than six to eight minutes. And uh, while we're a slightly more mature audience in World of Warships, we have slightly longer attention spans. We, we, can, we can take battles that last longer than 12 to 15 minutes. It's fine wargaming, there's no rush, nobody's going anywhere in a hurry. Uh, either way, six kills for Ned in the Flanders. Yeah, I know his name's SRT Demon, but Ned Flanders is better. Pretty good game all round for Ned's team. Pretty miserable game all round for the enemy team. Although it is nice to see that the submarines are bottom of the scoreboard on both teams. I do like it when submarine players aren't doing well. <laughs> and of course there was no carrier in that one, uh, which is great news if you're in a Flanders because the AA on this thing is bad. Oh god, it just occurred to me. If anybody from Wargaming is watching, please pay no attention whatsoever to that scoreboard. This does not mean that submarines need buffs, okay? I'm just, you know, getting that one out there before. I don't want to be held responsible for any submarine buffs that happen as a result from somebody in Wargaming watching this video. Oh, I've already said too much. <laughs> That's it. Six kills for Ned in the Flanders. More than 2,000 base XP. Well done. Take care. And I'll catch you next time.